So in this application, we're going to show you how to do offline um, functionality in Oracle Visual Builder. Uh, I'm going to use a table in an Oracle ATP database, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to REST enable it using Oracle ORs. Um, you give a name, um, I'm going to enable the object. Right now I'm not doing any security, we'll keep that for another tutorial and we'll click Finish. This creates a set of REST services that now allow me to fetch and update data on the table. If I go over to Postman and let's start by doing a GET operation and send it over there, um, you can see down here the information that I get about my two employees. If I switch this now to do a POST operation, you do a slash at the end, and put in the values that you want to insert. We can add, for example, a, an email as well. Um, in our case, and let's put in shy5 at oracle.com and we send it now. Okay, we got the record into the database. In fact, if you go back over here and you hit refresh, you'll get the new record in here, okay? So now that we have the REST enabled uh, POST and GET, and we also have uh, the operations for delete and update, we can go over and use that in Visual Builder. So we'll go over here and create service connections, and we're going to define them by endpoints. So let's pick up the endpoint we used here and place it here. The first one would be a GET operation that gets many employees. We'll call this one the ORDS service and we can test it to see that we get the results correctly. So let's copy the response body and hit create. Okay, so this was one operation. Now let's add the second operation, so another endpoint. This one would be a POST. It's going to be on the same AMP. Remember to add the slash at the end. Um, because this is a POST, we have a body, so we're going to copy the body that we used here as a sample. Okay, let's just change this to be 6, and we can call this guy Max, and Max here, like that. So this would be a sample. We can again test this, um, and then send we got the response, now it's employee 6, and we can copy response to body, add, and now we have the post operation. So now that we have those two enter points, we can go over and uh, develop our web application, for example. we we'll go over to the main page, we can collapse this section for now, and like always, we'll start by dropping a table on the page, hooking the table to the data that comes from our old GET REST service, and we're going to show you the ID, the name, the salary, and maybe the email, like that. We'll mark the ID as the ID field, click Finish, and we'll get the list of employees over here. Now one thing that we didn't do correctly is the POST operation. We actually didn't define it correctly. It's right now saying get many, so let's click on it and switch it to say this is actually our create operation. This is important because this would allow you now, when you're on the table, to click on the let's add a create page and you'll have this option here for using the post. Again, which fields do you want to add? We'll add all of them. You can change the order of those if we want to, like that. Click finish and now we have our create page. Okay. And we can switch this to just say create. Right. So now if you run our little application, you'll be able to see the employees and you'll be able to create an employee. Let's get employee 7. And our data is in the table. We're now going to show you how to do um, offline capabilities on top of this application. So to do that we're going to go back into Visual Builder and uh, to figure out how to do offline 
the first thing you'll probably do is Google. So if you Google VBCS offline, this would take you into our documentation. We have a full chapter that describes how to do offline, the basic architecture of how offline works, and it would point you also to the JET uh, offline persistence uh, solution for more information. It also has a sample uh, of code here that you can copy and use in your application. So I'm just going to copy and use it as is in my application. The place where you copy it into is the JavaScript part of your application. So this is kind of the app module part and uh, I, because it's empty right now, I'm just going to replace it with whatever I get from our documentation. As you can see, we're referencing here a set of libraries from the offline persistence that JET provides and we're then using it in the code and you can read the code and figure out what it does and um, the important line here is right here where we have an address for what we're actually going to cache okay so what you would want to do is replace this address with the address of the rest service that you're going to cache the data from right so I'm going to replace it with a part of the address of my REST service because I want to cache, for example, everything that comes from that server. Okay. Uh, of course, in some other situations, you might want to be more exact on which exact endpoint you want to cache. Um, in order to show you that caching actually works, I'm going to add one more button to my page right here. Um, we're going to rename this button to say Refresh. And this button is going to refresh the data in our table and um, to do that we're just going to invoke the data provider event on our service data provider that populates the table and on that we're going to invoke the refresh method so now we have a refresh button that refreshes the data in the table uh, by doing another query basically another rest call so let's run our little application okay um, I'm going to turn on the network um, over here the network monitor and we're going to hit the refresh button and you'll see that we're doing a rest call okay and if we click on this rest call okay you're seeing that it's already being delivered from our service worker so it's actually getting the data directly from the client and not going back to the server because when we fetch the data initially we stored it on our page so if we now go, for example, and remove one of those employees, let's remove Joe, for example, from the database directly. And if we'll go over here and hit refresh again, the data is coming from our client cache. Therefore, we're not going to get the updates. If we want to do the updates, we probably want a different um, caching mechanism for this endpoint. So if we look here, this is the caching strategy we're using right now, the fetch strategy. And this fetch strategy is called first strategy, a cache first strategy, basically meaning we're always getting the data from the cache initially when it's there. Now, if you go and copy this and Google this one, you'll be directed to our JavaScript documentation for the persistence. And you'll see that there are two caching strategies that you can use, okay? What we're using right now is cache first, but there's another one that is called cache if offline, which is something that most people would actually want to use. And this would mean that we only cache the data when we're offline and then we're returning the data from the cache. Okay? So let's copy this one and replace our code okay, and the strategy that we're using to do a get cache if we're offline. Okay. So run the page again and we get the data. And if we look at the current operation, yeah, it's coming from um, our repository, from the cache. So let's clear our cache first, okay, and then reload our application. Okay, so we don't have data in the cache. We're currently online, so we get the real data um, over here. And if we look at the REST call over here, yeah, it was served from the server. Now we can turn on offline. Okay. hit refresh and now if we look at the call that we did this was served from our persistence layer okay, from our cache if we now switch again into online we'll be able to get the data from the real database so first let's remove one record from the database again okay, so removing the shy 5 record 
going up here and doing refresh, we're still fetching from the cache, so we're not seeing the changes. But if we're moving over to be online, hit refresh, this time we're fetching directly from the server, the database, and we get the updated set of records over here. So now we're basically caching when the application is offline, and otherwise, when we're online, we're getting data directly from the server. The next step is to hook up the POST operation. So the POST operation, the CREATE operation here, is a little bit more complex and you need to add a little bit more code here. So you will be able to copy this code from my blog entry that accompanies this video. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to add a section that handles situations of post. So we're overriding how we're handling a post operation. So let's copy this and we'll put it as one of the options again that we're defining to our offline handler. And we're referencing here a handle post method. So we need to add this handle post method. So again, we're going to copy it. Uh, you'll copy it from my blog. I'm copying it from this code sample I have here. Okay. And this is simply a method that tells our offline handler what to do in a case of POST. And if you look at this code, you will see that all we're doing here is we're uh, returning um, an OK code from our um, request. Okay, so the 202 code that we're returning over here. You can also see that this is using something called persistence utils. This is another library that we need to add, so let's add this library. Again, you can copy this from my blog entry. Okay, and we'll add it just here. Above, for example, the persistence manager, don't forget the comma over here. And then you need to also add it in the function over here. So not just in the define. Edit it the right location, add the comma, and we're actually using an uppercase here when we're referring it to it later on over here okay like that so this handles our post operation now we need one more method and that method would actually synchronize the data that we're caching the post operations once we're back online so to do that we're going to add one more method from our um, code sample And that method is this method here called data sync. So let's copy this one. It's a simple app module function. We'll place it here. Okay. And all it does, if you look at it, is just calls our service worker and uh, tells it to sync the offline data. So this is an intentional method that we're doing. Okay, so now we need a button that would actually invoke this method. Let's go back to our page and we're going to add another button um, right over here between the others. We're going to change the title of the button and then we're going to add an event on top of it. And in the event, we're going to call our module function. So that would be the sync data method. Okay. And then we're going to refresh our service data provider again. Now let's again clear everything and create a record. Um, again, we're going to switch over to be offline and we're going to put in that about the record. Click 
click save and you can see that we got the message as though the operation was successful because we returned the right code, right, the 202. Okay. Now, we're still offline, therefore the data is actually not in the database. Okay, so the 202 came back from our persistence layer because we have a post that uh, handle the post. Okay. If you go to the database and you do a refresh, of course the new record is not here. But if you come back and switch to be online and click the data sync, okay, we're going to clear here so you'll see what's going to happen. Okay. Um, let me show you just that the operation you did are kept here in this database on the client, right? So if you look here, um, by the sequence over here, you can see the operations that our persistent handler is doing. Okay, and you can see this was the get, and then after that we had the post. Okay, and then we did another get. Okay, so now we need to replay the post operation, and this is what's going to happen when we click the data sync button. So let's make sure we're online. Click the data sync. This replays our post operation, and you will be able to see it in the log. Okay. And you can now see the data in the table. So this is a little bit of how you can start working with the offline persistence inside Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service uh, to enable your applications to work offline as well as online.